Hello, my name is Brian Shawley with Vactron Equipment, and I'm going to do a walk around on the LP Series Vactron. We're going to start, begin with the engine compartment and the control panel. Within the control panel, you have your key on and off switch, your water pump on and off switch that controls an electric clutch. It's also attached to a sensor in the water tank. When the water is below, uh, almost empty, it shuts the water pump off, electric clutch off, so you don't damage your pump. So your on and off is here. Your lights, one pull out gives you your strobe. Two pulls gives you your strobe and your work lights at the rear of the machine. You have your throttle control here for high and low throttle. It's electronic throttle. You also have your oil pressure gauge, your fuel gauge, volts, hour meter, water temperature, and then your inches of mercury for vac uh, vacuum, and also your PSI for pressure on the uh, debris tank, which we'll talk about in just a minute. That's your control panel. Waterproof, lockable control panel. The vacuum and pressure is controlled here by this lever. When you pull the lever to this side, you have vacuum. You're pulling a vacuum into the tank for sucking up debris. If you put it in the center, it's in neutral. It's neither pulling air in or pushing air into the tank. And then if you have a clog in your suction hose, you can simply put this to pressure, close the valve at the back, back of the debris tank, allow the tank to build up volume of, of pressure, and then open that quickly and it will purge your vacuum hose uh, of debris. You can also pump off liquid materials out of your tank into another container uh, for storage and transportation. Also on this side, you have full access to your engine. Your Yanmar diesel engine on the LP series, you have an option of a 36 horsepower, 49 horsepower Yanmar diesel. You can check your oil, your oil filter, oil fill, water, diesel uh, separator, and then your, your fuel filter here. You also have a piece up here that you can unscrew to add coolant to your radiator off one, one side. So in the morning, first thing you want to do is check your fluids in your engine to make sure you're ready to, ready to operate. All lockable as well. On this side, you do have three grease fittings. Those are actually for the vacuum pump. They run all the way over to the other side. When we get to that side, I'll show you what, what, what those attach to. Um, here we have the antifreeze system. Uh, this allows you to antifreeze your water pump and your lines in the cold weather. You simply have a Siamese valve here with a small arrow. Down here it has water off and antifreeze. When it's pointing up to the center, it's off, which means you can open your filter here. You have a screen inside here that you need to check once a week. Clean that filter out. If your water pump quits working and you have plenty of water, a lot of times it's because this filter is clogged. When you want to antifreeze, you simply turn this valve to antifreeze, turn your pump on, allow the antifreeze to run. It runs out the hose at the rear of the unit. Once you see the blue or the red, depending on what antifreeze you have going out of that hose, then you are completely antifreeze. You turn your pump off. Now you do have a return line that when you release your trigger on your uh, water pump, when you on your water wands here, when you release the trigger, it recirculates the water back into the tank. There is a line there that if you don't take the water hose and attach it to this, to one of these wands, without a trigger, just turn the pump on for about three seconds, it will antifreeze that line as well, okay? And then once it's antifreeze, of course you want to turn it back to the off position for, for storage. Now, when you want to go and use the machine, you turn it over to water, on this side, arrow pointing to the water. You can bring your hose around, open this lid, and put your antifreeze back in here and reuse it a couple times. We don't recommend any more than two times. Or you just run the, run the pump until the blue exits the line, clear water starts coming through, then you're ready and you're ready to work for the day. Here's the filter housing, very important. This is what protects your blower. All the dirty air that comes out of that tank passes through this filter housing before it goes back through the vacuum pump. Um, you have a sight glass down here at the bottom you can open up to inspect the filters to see if they need to be cleaned. And you also have a valve at the bottom, a two and a half inch valve down there that every day you need to open that up and allow any water or debris that's been captured in there to, to exit. You can also open that valve at the end of the day, 
leave it at idle, put this to pressure, and it will purge the filters and blow any debris that's in here out the bottom. If you do that on a regular basis, you won't have to clean your filters near as often. Depending on your application, check them every, uh, make sure you pull them out every 30 to 60 days, depending on your application, to clean these filters. To clean the filters or to remove them, you have a wing nut up top, you take the single wing nut off, pull this lid off. Now there's a rubber gasket, gasket that goes around the top of here. That's going to come off with the lid, but it's not attached to the lid, it just sticks to it. Pull that rubber gasket off, set everything to the side, pull your filters out. You have three wing nuts inside there that allow plates to move over so the filters come out easily. Pull them out and clean them with either the low pressure water wand or air. Be very gentle with the filters. They're made out of polyethylene material, but they can rip. And they will work you uh, they will last a long time if you take good care of them. Once you clean the filters, put them back in, put your plates back in place, tighten all the wing nuts, and then take the rubber gasket that I mentioned earlier, put it back on the tank first, around the top rim of the tank, then the lid, then there's a rubber gasket that goes on there. Very important, both those rubber gaskets are important, but a rubber washer on top. Put that in that hole, tighten the wing nut. That way you don't have any air leaking. Once you've tightened it down, then you want to put it under vacuum, let it sit, pull down a vacuum, close your valve at the rear of the tank, and then re-tighten. Okay? That way you know you're not going to have any air escaping. Now I want to talk about the hose reel. It's a self-retracting hose reel with your unloader valve on the side. And the black knob back here that can adjust the water pressure. When it's turned all the way to the right, you're going to get max pressure, which is 4,000 PSI at the pump, about 3,800 PSI at this tip, the roto nozzle, and about 1,000 PSI at the cleanup one. You can use that uh, with the uh, variable fan on that uh, tip, this turn, to give you different, whether it's a stream or a fan, which I'll demonstrate. And the roto nozzle, of course, is used for digging, which I'll also demonstrate here in a moment. But the, uh, when you turn this knob, the black knob to the left, it's going to turn that pressure down. So it's going to go, it's always going to read 4,000 PSI when you release the trigger. But when you squeeze it, that's when you're going to get your true reading here. And you can go all the way down to 1,000 PSI on the roto nozzle if you want to. But generally you're digging at about 3,800 PSI here. And then you use that, this one for cleaning at about 1,000 PSI. If you use this on your paint and your decals, you will peel them off if you get too close. So always use the cleanup wand when you're cleaning the machine. The rear door has safety latches. That's mainly because of safety going down the road, but mainly before the um, reverse pressure. When we pressurize this tank so that you can clean out your vacuum hose, you're putting pressure on that door. So the safety latches are what keep the door secure for that purpose and for transportation. Now, you can manhandle those and pull them off or try to push them on, but the easiest way is to start the machine, put it under vacuum, and let it build up full vacuum. It pulls the door in, and then the latches are a lot easier to release and to set, which I'll demonstrate as well. This is your vacuum port. When you open that up, it's gonna suck in or blow out. When you're gonna pressurize the tank to clean out your hose, Shut this off, let that build up pressure, lay your hose out, and then all at once release it. And it's going to give you a big, it's not a real high PSI, but it's a lot of volume. So it's going to uh, push the material out of the hose. You also can shut this off, open your six way valve, and then pressurize the tank if you have liquids in here, and open that about halfway, and you can force the liquid materials out, or you can put a hose on here, run it to another container and offload liquids only. You can't offload uh, dry materials, but you can offload liquid materials under pressure. Of course, for unloading dry materials out of the tank, the hydraulic door, which again, I'm gonna demonstrate here in a moment, will open up once you've released your latches all the way perpendicular to the tank. Makes it very easy to clean inside. Then you have a full tilt dump to about 60 degrees. All the material will slide out. There's a polymer liner on the underneath side of the tank. That's what, you, that's what helps the material slide out. Also within the tank, you've got your hydraulic cylinder, you've got your shutoff valve or valve when the material is full or the tank is full, the ball sucks up and shuts it down. 
whenever you, at the end of the day, when you clean the machine out, you always want to clean those uh, uh, parts inside the tank as well. Keep, uh, clean the uh, steel all the way around. The more you, the lo better you do that, the longer the tank's going to last. Of course, your three-inch suction hose hooks right in here. Run rolls out. You got 33 feet of that. You can also utilize four-inch suction hose if you have the super diesel, which has a thousand cm. Work lights that I turned on and off before. You got two work lights. Strobe light in the center. When you pull the knob out, one time your strobe will come on. When you pull it all the way out, your strobe and your work lights come on. One other thing I wanted to point out, right here, these are your controls for your hydraulic door and your tank dump. We put the controls forward so that the operator is that clear and out of the way. When, you, when I demonstrate lifting the door and closing and dumping, you'll see that when the door opens up, there's a safety bar that falls into place. And that is so that you can get up underneath there, clean the tank, clean the door, and not worry about the door coming down on, on the operator. Uh, once I'm done, I'm ready to shut the door, you just simply lift it up, set it inside, go to the other side, again, away from the door, away from the operating mechanism, and shut the door, put the tank down. You never want to up, lift the tank up and then open the door, okay? Uh, or vice versa, why it's up, shut the door. The reason being you have gravity hinges here, what they call gravity hinges, and they're designed to come down and go into perfect place when the tank is in the down position. The other thing you don't want to do is, with a load in the tank, lift it up and then try to open the door. You're putting undue stress on the mechanism inside the tank itself.
Okay, now we've come around to the other side of the machine. One of the point that I want to make on the water system is you have two saddle tanks and the saddle tanks join at the lowest point. So when you fill up one side, it's automatically going to fill up the other side and they're going to pull from both tanks simultaneously. So the levels will drop accordingly. Uh, of course, being on uneven ground makes a difference. But at the, at the lowest point, and I'll show you here at a, in a brief moment, where you can drain the water tanks at the end of the day or end of the week when you're done using them. We're on the other side of the engine stand here. Again, lockable latches, pin door. You notice the attenuation material within the inside of the cabinet, all the way around, all the way at the top, uh, obviously for sound deadening. Uh, on this side, you have access to your battery, you have access to your vacuum pump, and you have access to your water pump. A um, couple uh, things you gotta keep in mind here, when you're changing the oil on the water pump, you have easy access to it here. Same with the bath side and the levels here on the vacuum pump, but key, on this side of the vacuum pump, there are two grease fittings. Those grease fittings need to be greased every 50 hours. And I'll show you how you can see at a quick reference what all the service intervals are on the backdrop. But keep in mind, check the tension of your belts. You have a tensioner. You want to keep, every so often, just take a look at your belts, make sure that they're not worn. You also want to, every 50 hours, grease these fittings. Every 300, first 50 hours, you do the uh, oil bath on the blower and the water pump, and then it's uh, every 300 hours, and then we'll look over there and I'll show you how you can see where, what the fluids are that you use on each for the grease, for the oil, for both the vacuum pump and the water pump. Easy access to everything. Um, this is your exhaust out of here from your vacuum pump, and it goes into the four-way valve, and that's what allows you, and that's what you're turning on the other side, that's what allows you to change from vacuum or to pressure within the tank itself. Now let's recap a little bit. Control panel has all your controls for your water pump, your throttle, your ignition, and your gauges. Your water pump works off an electric clutch that the switch on the right turns on and off. If your water level is low, the water pump electric clutch will automatically disengage so you don't burn up your clutch. On the inside door of the control panel, you have some more warning stickers, but you also have operating procedures, how to winterize the pump, and the unit service intervals, including what fluids to use, all here. This information is also available within your owner's manual, operating manual, which is kept back here on the back of the engine stand. On the back side of the control panel is an antifreeze bypass switch. It's a momentary switch. It will not stay locked in one position, only the off position. It won't stay locked in the on position. This allows you to bypass the automatic shutoff of the water pump, the, of the electric clutch. So if your water tanks are empty, you can still antifreeze or run a chlorine water solution through that same tank to keep algae from growing. So if your water tanks are empty and you want to run the water pump just long enough to antifreeze the system, you can hit this switch while the water pump switch is on and it will bypass, turn the pump on so you can pull antifreeze out of the tank and antifreeze the system. Service points for all for the engine are all accessible on one side of the machine. Three grease fittings for the four-way valve. Main water drain that drains both the tanks simultaneously at the lowest point. The nomenclature is on the unit itself, the LP simply stands for low profile, the 555 is 500 gallons, the middle five is hydraulic door, the last five stands for reverse pressure. So if this was an 800 gallon system, it would be an 855. And the SDT, the SD is super diesel, which indicates that it has the 49 horsepower and the 1000 CFM, and the T is trailer mounted. So if you have a truck mounted unit, it would just be SD and then it would be a skid or a truck mounted unit. 
always be familiar with your stickers that are around the unit read them always wear eye and ear protection all right this is the pressure vacuum lever when you turn push it to the right towards vacuum you create a vacuum in the tank to suck up materials put it in the middle where it is now it's doing nothing it's not, neither putting air into the tank or taking it out and then when you push it to pressure that's used to clear the hose of debris or to push out liquid materials out of the tank into another container this area here is the antifreeze tank on top the Siamese valve below with the filter remember to clean that filter once a week it's just a screen pull out clean it off put it back in when you're taking that out always put the knob on the off position which is straight up and down that way water won't come gushing out of that this is your open close up and down controls for the hydraulics for the hydraulic door and the tank for dumping the tank debris tank two and a half inch ball valve at the bottom of the filter housing to drain that is designed to be drained daily to get the debris and the water out of the filter housing that it has ca captured during the day's work sight glass so you can open that up see the condition of your filters and the inside of your filter housing this is the wing nut at the top of the filter housing that you remove take the top off you'll notice the rubber gasket or the rubber washer excuse me and then under the lid is the rubber gasket both of those have to be put back on otherwise you're gonna have leaks and you won't have full vacuum inside there are three filters you remove three wing nuts pull the plates out of the way pull the filters out clean them with the low pressure water wand only at fan so that you don't damage the filters let them dry put them back in you're ready to go back to work on this side of your filter housing you have two inlets this one here is for vacuum when you reach full vacuum on this machine which is around 15 to 16 inches of mercury this valve opens up and allows the pump to maintain that 15 or 16 inches but not go above it so it won't overheat the pump on the other side for your pressure once you get to your 4 psi for pressure the rest of the air escapes out of this mechanism here allowing the machine to maintain but not go above the 4 psi you have two water wands one is for cleaning which is the shorter of the two that has the variable nozzle that limits the water pressure no matter what the pump set at at 1000 psi so not to damage the paint or the stickers and then you have the roto nozzle which is designed for digging this is the nozzle you put in the ground to churn up the ground as you're sucking it out with the vacuum hose this nozzle is very safe it spins the water so it's safe even on direct buried cable and again you're running about 3800 psi at the tip yeah, but you can turn that down depending on your soil conditions self retracting hose reel with an unloader valve and gauge built onto the side the black knob is used to control pressure turned all the way to the right will give you full pressure your pump is always going to indicate 4000 psi but when you squeeze the trigger that the gauge here will give you your usable pressure safety latches on the debris tank on most of our truck models there's only two safety latches the two at the very bottom on each side remember when you're opening the safety latches or putting them back on bring the unit under full vacuum with this lever closed and this lever closed so that you're pulling a full vacuum on the tank the door will cinch in and the latches come off very easily and also go back on very easily when you're going to pressurize the tank to purge the hose you close this valve let it build up to full uh, pressure which is only about 4 psi but there's a lot of volume in that tank so you got a good purge of air and then all at once open the valve quickly and whatever's in the hose will purge out 
You also can pressurize the tank and offload liquid materials only out of this six inch discharge valve at the bottom of the tank. Easy access for, to your battery, to your water pump, and to your vacuum pump. You can see your sight glass on your vacuum pump. Don't forget you have two grease fittings, one, two on this side of the vacuum pump. They have to be greased every 50 hours. And then of course your fluids in your water pump have to be, there's your fill there, have to be changed out.